like to come forward, uh, this mic. Thank you. Oh, Alan's in the house. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm Julie. Julie, lovely to meet you, Julie. Lovely to meet you too. It's the first time I've met you. I'm a little bit in love with you. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> so this year, as a non-runner, I completed the London Marathon. You did? I did! Congratulations! Yeah. And I know you did too. Yeah. But you kind of agreed to it a week before without any training. How was it for you? Do you know, like, at times I just, like, somebody asks me something and I just say yes. <laughs> so, like, the other opportunity said, do you want to run the London Marathon? I was like, yeah, definitely. And I thought it would be a really good fundraising opportunity because just to tell you about, because like, each year the Lord Mayor basically gets to choose some local charities that he wants to, he or she wants to support. So I literally had, like, 37 different charities pitched to me. And I really wanted to make a concerted effort to basically say, well, the charities that I chose, I wanted to be basically... I guess smaller charities that really had a big impact in Sheffield and the local communities and what they do. But, so I kind of chose a charity that was, had a lot of volunteer run. And uh, the three charities that I kind of chose were Sheffield Women's Council and Therapy Service, which the chair of that Catherine happens to be here today. Hello, Catherine. And then you've got um, Flourish Mental Health and Unity Gym Project, which are a young person's charity that deal with a lot of various issues of young people, one of them being tackling the knife crime culture. But anyway, so I thought, I'm going to do this marathon. and. Do you know what it's like, uh, Julia? I've got like, mentally I know I can do it, mate. Like, it's fine, like, but my legs told me something different. <laughs> and I thought, I'm, I, I was just gonna basically do it. And then I just went to start, and I didn't do any of the like carb loading or like rehydrate yourself. I just thought it'll, it'll be completely fine. Honestly, up until halfway, I, I was fine, but then it just went downhill, like. Honestly, I just got like really bad cramps, and I just, so I practiced every like half a mile, so I just stopped for a physio and just sat down. I just kept pushing, but honestly, the amount of it, as you know, Julie, the support of the whole crowd is absolutely amazing. And I hope all of you guys get to experience a London Marathon at some point. But, like, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. As much as I was in a lot of pain and I was wobbling, the next day it was definitely great. Do you think the um, kind of strengthening you got in your glutes from the squatting Great <laughs> <laughs> <Great> question. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Do you know, someone asked me another ridiculous question the other week. Uh, someone was like, imagine, do you ever like, have you ever had like an accidentally fired when you squat? And, and that was like a women's institute meeting as well. And I had to jump and think about that, and I, the answer was no. Like, but like, like, another like, I got into it like, in terms of like bizarre questions, I was speaking at a primary school. And I, because at the end of the night, I asked all the kids, anyone got any questions or whatnot? And one kid was like, are you my father? <laughs> and like an idiot, like an idiot, I was like, I was like, what's your mother's name? <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, and then he told me his mother's name, I was like, no. <laughs> Funny, but the kids didn't understand it, so it was all funny. <laughs> but like, <laughs> I was, I've definitely been asked a lot of like really bizarre questions. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you. Hi. Hi, what's Hello. Your name? Uh, my name's Kathy. Hello. Hi. We've met briefly before because you, um, my daughter is in the, the Brownies, and you met the Brownies. She's very impressed and she really liked the fact that you had Donald Trump's face on your toilet paper. Yeah. <laughs> that was nice. um, I've, got quite, I've got a kind of a serious question, sorry. Um, I was um, accosted outside Morrison's today by Paul Bloomfield, um, Labour MP. Um, and I've voted Labour all my life um, and I'm planning not to vote Labour um, yeah. in the next election. Yeah. Um, and I'm planning to vote um, He said, uh, oh my gee, he's such a showman though, isn't he? And I would really just like to ask you, um, well, it's kind of to tell us why we should be voting for you because I slightly resented him saying that but I didn't really know what to say back so that's my question in what way are you really serious as well as being an excellent ambassador for our fantastic city yeah no definitely so there's I'm sure everyone knows there's a European elections kind of coming up and um, in about a couple of weeks time 23rd of May and in all honesty one of the I guess I you know honestly I didn't have an intention to run up until like about a month ago but I guess there's just something that kind of compels us each to act and want to do
do something, and I guess especially with the current climate of the, that we're living in. And for that, I'm sure you guys are. So I actually joined the Green Party in 2014, and the reason I actually got politicised in the first place was because of the last European elections, when it was during the rise of Nigel Farage and UKIP. Because all I was just seeing on the TV and everything that was happening was just so much rhetoric of hate, fear and division. I thought if I can at least make, first of all I was tired of complaining, but I thought if I can at least make my small part of the world, Sheffield, my community that bit better, that's at least me having a positive contribution to those around me. And then that's what got me politicised that I kind of started campaigning in Sheffield and whatnot. And you know, honestly, like, this European election is just so much about Brexit because I don't know what everyone stands in, but I actually will loudly and proudly campaign for Remain and fight for our people's votes, which at the moment, in all honesty, Labour aren't committed in doing that. It's let's be completely the other side. And what even frustrates me about the fact, and um, Labour's kind of stance on it, is like the fact that they want a confirmatory vote on the Conservative parties and Brexit, but not their own, not their own kind of deal. So they're happy to push Brexit through. But it's like, currently, as it sounds in the European election, the only Remain party who is anti-austerity because the Lib, Lib Dems will claim the fact that they're also anti-Brexit, they're trying to stop Brexit, but let's be honest, you can also argue the fact that they were one of the architects in terms of actually this whole Brexit situation because a lot of people voted Brexit for the rightful reasons because due down to austerity, a lot of people were left behind communities, people kind of felt like the NHS was failing, people were saying the fact that our economy is not enough school places and that's nothing to do with it, that's all down to failed government policy and at times People don't necessarily kind of understand that, but it is trying to get that message out there to people. And I just can't understand. Like, I'm, honestly, I'll be the first one to say the EU is not perfect. It's by nowhere like a safe haven of progressive ideas. But what I do understand that we're better off remaining in the EU because, I guess, issues like air pollution, inequality, they have no borders. We're actually better off being part of the EU, remaining, but also transforming the EU. And of course the EU has provided with so many other benefits at the same time. The simple fact that we can freely move around work in different countries, fall in love in different countries and do so much other things. It's just, I think it's something that we really need to hold dear. But also even the way we retrospect, we actually speak about migrants, you know, honestly, like it's, regardless of what you think, look, think about immigrants, they are statistically, again, economically, culturally, in every aspect of our lives. And I feel like we need to protect that and we need to, we can't be literally be like, well, I feel at times Labour's been being a facilitator of a Tory Brexit because we can't, we need to be honest with ourselves and when you have like Paul Brownfield or Labour that are sitting on the fence, like you're not gonna, you're not winning anybody over. Like I feel as if when you can't sit on the fence, you know, honestly. And I think with the Greens, like myself, all I can do, you know, honestly, is not just campaign for men, all the other kind of things, be really bold and forward thinking and actions, what we want to do. And hopefully, like let's be honest, I'll be quite honest with you, like it is going to be close. It's and uh, there's a lot of people that are going for us, like. Especially if we're fighting for like the sixth seat between ourselves and Lib Dem, that some Labour will get in like the Brexit party are massively kind of like going to do really, really well and we're not exactly what they're like. So I honestly think, personally, Britain is having some sort of identity crisis and the fact that Brexit is at the epicentre of that. And yeah, it seems like there's like a massive battle for the soul of Britain and I just don't believe it belongs to the likes of Nigel Farage's and those sort of people. I feel like we've got a better story to tell, which is a story of hope, of bringing people together, of thinking progressively. And that's what the Green Party has always stood for. Honestly, I think, like, look, for example, just look at what climate change it took. Not just a 16-year-old girl from Sweden, like, like Extinction Rebellion, David, Atten David Attenborough uh, documentary, so many of just to really highlight and bring that to the forefront of things, especially when we know scientists have told us we've only got 11 years to actually get our act together. It is simple as action or extinction now, the fact that people are starting to wake up like... So yeah, there's honestly just so much that needs to kind of be done. I feel like the Green Party have always been consistent with it as well. It's not all political, everyone. But like, it's just that consistency, you know, honestly. And I feel like we can't, we're living in a time we, where you, we can't afford to sit on the fence. We can't afford to be just halfway houses between things trying to pretend that we're trying to please them. We need to be bold. We need to be strong and say, no, this is where we stand on it. And I just don't feel like Sadly, Labour are coming up to the forefront and actually being as bold as their own members, people would like. And that's why a lot of people are actually voting differently this year. But I hope that answers some of your questions.